Cults have been around for ages, and there seems to be no shortage of them in various aspects of society. The rich and the famous, as well as the everyday impressionable, have fallen victim to cults. Most cult leaders are charismatic and narcissistic, which is how they're able to attract and grow a following. One of those alleged cultists was the Tennessee-born author Gwen Shamblin Lara. Known for often sporting a pompadour hairstyle, she was best known as the creator of the Way Down Diet and Workshop, a concept that morphed into a religion, and Lara founded the Remnant Fellowship Church. This is a story about success, lust, greed, betrayal, and crime. This is the rise and fall of Gwen Chamblin, the millionaire preacher with a weight loss cult. Gwen Chamblin Lara was born on February 18, 1955 in Memphis, Tennessee. Her father, Walter Henley, worked as a doctor, and his influence sparked her interest in the medical field, leading her to pursue a career as a dietitian. Growing up in a deeply religious household, Gwen's upbringing in the Church of Christ, a conservative Protestant denomination, shaped her path and exposed her to outdated beliefs regarding women. The church adhered to strict rules and imposed limitations on women, prohibiting them from speaking or preaching publicly and excluding them from leadership positions. The church also rejected the inclusion of music in its worship practices, considering it incompatible with traditional Christianity. Gwen eventually decided to break away from her childhood church in 1999 to establish her own church, which symbolized her belief in using her platform to preach and blend weight loss advice with religious teachings. Her Way Down workshop, initiated in 1986, advocated a theological approach to intuitive eating consuming food only when hungry, and seeking solace in prayer during moments of cravings. This explicit connection between diet culture and holiness, expressed as, quote, how to stop bowing down to the refrigerator and how to bow back down to him, garnered widespread popularity among churches. God revealed to me that this was the true deliverance and that the key to permanent weight control is a matter of the heart. What I do in this program is teach people how to um, stop bowing down to the refrigerator and uh, how to bow back down to Him. These workshops promised something many women were desperately craving, a framework for weight loss that felt meaningful infused with the righteousness and familiarity of religion, a community and common purpose beyond the home. In 1992, the Way Down program gained momentum, prompting Gwen to conduct Way Down workshops from her garage. She crafted a workbook for clients to journal their experiences and developed Bible studies centered around weight loss. Gwen began propagating the message that people were unable to consistently shed weight because they lacked faithfulness to God. The success of her 1997 book, The Way Down Diet, catapulted Gwen into the spotlight. She went on book tours she called Rebuilding the Wall, where she would teach the Way Down curriculum live sign books and bring people on stage to share their success stories. She accumulated a net worth of $5 million and achieved what many would consider the pinnacle of success with 30,000 Way Down workshop locations convening weekly worldwide. By the early 2000s, Shamblin had sold millions of books, 
made appearances on notable television shows like Larry King Live and The Tyra Banks Show, and even been featured in a profile by The New Yorker. When people were in prison camps and ate less food, they lost weight. All of them. Shamlin, surely you're not making a comparison between the forced starvation of a population and middle-class Americans' eating habits? Are you honestly doing that? I have been for 15 years, and a lot of people have responded. For years, Shamblin projected a glowing, bubbly, lavish facade. A self-made Christian businesswoman devoted to helping others, particularly women, finally achieve their weight loss goals by getting closer to God. However, over the course of two decades, Remnant Fellowship evolved into something far more encompassing than weight loss. As depicted in the chilling narrative of the Way Down podcast, Shamblin gradually exerted greater control over members' financial affairs, marriages, custody battles, parenting styles, social media presence, and eventually their contact with the outside world. Testimonies from ex-members and those threatened with the loss of family members to the insular group demonstrate how Remnant was actually about power and controlling people's lives. Within Remnant Fellowship, members' social media activities were closely monitored and controlled. Leaders placed restrictions on what individuals could post and whom they could follow. Many women who have left the group recall never being allowed to defy their husband's wishes under any circumstances. They were allegedly supposed to ask their husband about something once and never again, no matter his decision. If these women failed to adhere to complete submission, husbands would report their disobedience to the leaders, resulting in mandatory counseling at the church. Several ex-members recount instances where they were encouraged by their church leaders to remain in their marriages even after their husbands had engaged in infidelity, sometimes even multiple affairs. These leaders would invoke scriptures on forgiveness, urging the women to welcome their unfaithful partners back with open arms. That's because Gwen was against divorce, no matter the circumstance which was highly hypocritical since she divorced her husband of more than 20 years to marry another man. Less than 60 days after her divorce, and what just may be the fanciest wedding Tennessee has ever seen, with nearly 1,500 guests, she married Joe Lara. In 2003, Joseph and Sonia Smith, members of Remnant Fellowship, were convicted and sentenced to life in prison for the fatal beating of their eight-year-old son, Joseph, as a form of punishment. Investigators discovered a pattern of ongoing abuse inflicted upon the child, and a former babysitter alleges that she was instructed to beat Joseph at church. Multiple witnesses attested to hearing the abuse taking place within the church premises. Other ex-members recall Gwen Shamblin providing instructions on how to physically discipline their children using items such as glue sticks, emphasizing that obedience to God and remnant leadership was paramount. Shamblin denied endorsing abuse but a recording was obtained where Shamblin praised Sonia Smith for subjecting Joseph to three days of isolation with nothing but a Bible. Uh, this is Sonia Smith in Atlanta. Sonia! You... And you, Hi. Have, you have four children. Go ahead, Sonia. <laughs> well, first, I wanted to thank you. Last week, my seven-year-old, he was going through some changes. He was very destructive. I did exactly what Ted told me to do, to uh, spank him on the back of his thighs. 
uh, take everything out of his room and locked him in there from that Friday until Monday and only left him in the room with his Bible. And uh, I just praise God. And that's just from obeying, setting those boundaries, making it clear, uh, and just following God's lead. And so people need to know there's hope. And that's a miracle. You've got a child that's going from just bizarre down to in control. So I'll praise God. Local authorities conducted an investigation to determine if Shamblin and Remnant's teachings contributed to Joseph's tragic death. However, no definitive conclusion was reached. The church defended the Smiths, asserting that they were falsely accused and continued to offer support. Gwen also faced a religious discrimination lawsuit filed by multiple former employees who claimed they were terminated for refusing to attend Remnant Church. The plaintiff's attorney asserted that Gwen imposed religious tests on the employees, leading to their dismissal. At least 35 employees of Way Down Workshop claim to have been coerced into resigning or were terminated for their refusal to attend Shamblin's church. Good afternoon. Initial reports indicated that a plane crashed into the water just off the shore of the Freight Sanders Recreational Area. We do anticipate search rescue efforts to continue through the night. Um, we will provide updates as we have them. Investigators updated us just about an hour ago and they told me that their rescue efforts have now turned into recovery efforts. Rutherford County officials just confirmed the seven people on board are all leaders at Remnant Fellowship Church in Brentwood. On the 29th of May, Shamblin and her husband, Joe Lara, as well as five other leaders within Remnant Fellowship, boarded a small Cessna plane ready to fly from Tennessee to attend a Trump rally in Florida. Joe was the pilot, but he never ended up getting them out of Tennessee as the plane crashed into a lake. Gwen, who had previously said on national television that half of her will was going to God and the church, left no part of her estate to Remnant Fellowship but instead designated her two children, Michael and Elizabeth Shamblin, as beneficiaries. Ironically, at the time of her passing, she had been in the midst of filming a nine-week video series on greed, urging congregants to give up their wealth. Gwen Shamblin's influence led many to believe that achieving thinness, even through dangerous means, equated to holiness in the eyes of God. Her teachings left behind a trail of hurt and betrayal affecting many young girls and women. Her deceits were evident as she made empty promises, maintained a facade by concealing her flaws, and capitalized on the vulnerabilities of those who had faith in Christ. This was the cautionary tale of Gwen Shamblin, the false prophet who went from diet guru to an evangelical cult leader. So that's all for today's video. If you made it this far, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.